Good evening. My name is Patrick Hanlon. I'm the vice chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. And in the absence of our uh, chair, uh, I'll be yeah, presiding over tonight's, uh, tonight's meeting. Um, I'm calling this meeting of the board to order at uh, uh, 7.33 uh, p.m. And I'd like to first confirm that all members of the board and anticipated officials are present. So let me go through the list of the board first. Roger DuPont here. Uh, Patrick Hanlon is here. Elaine Hoffman. Here. Venkat Holy. Here. Adam LeBlanc. Here. Daniel Ricardelli. Here. Okay. I don't think I missed anybody this time. No. Town officials. Colleen Ralston. Here. Is Vincent Lee here? Colleen, do you know? I don't see him. <clears throat> okay. So uh, appearing for, we have a number of cases on the agenda and I wanna go through the, make sure that the people who are representing uh, the applicants or the applicants themselves are, uh, are present. So uh, appearing for 60 High Height Road, High Heath Road is Chris Nielsen. Yes, I'm here. And also uh, my wife, Emily, and our architect, Chris Berry. What's, what's our uh, 60? I'm, I'm here, Chris Berry. Chris Berry and Emily, is she here? She's on the same with me. okay, got it. Oh, for uh, 60 to 62 Magnolia Street, uh, on our list is for applicants is Rebecca and David Saff and uh, Alexander Radicevich. And my name is Brett Carricker. I'm the GC. The homeowners are on the call, but I will be doing their representation. Okay. Brett Carricker. Thank you, Mr. Carricker. Um, sure. For 14 Oakland Street? Yes, uh, uh, Bob and Essie. Uh, I'll okay. be representing the uh, the owners, and they will be on the uh, call, uh, on the Zoom uh, oh, as here. the architect. All right. Okay, and the architect is Catherine uh, Beeksha? Yes. No, the, the, the owners are the... Yeah. Who Alexander is the architect? Okay, yeah. got it. Yep. And for um, 61 Ariel Street, the applicants are Laura Walden and Emily Walden? Yes, and we're here this evening and our um, architect and contractor is here as well. Okay, got it. Who's the architect? Alexander uh, Peterson representing Derby Square Architects. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely, consistent with the act making appropriations for the fiscal year 2023 to provide for supplementing existing certain existing appropriations and for certain other activities and projects, including ours, um, signed into law on March 29th, 2023. This act includes an extension until March 31st of 2025 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 uh, executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. Um, public bodies under that uh, can uh, meet in uh, remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location, so long as they provide adequate alternative access to uh, remote meetings. Public bodies may meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period uh, during each public hearing. Uh, and I would like to stress that the public comment period is for that once it closes, uh, the uh, people may speak only with at the invitation of a member of the board. Uh, that is to say the public may speak. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website, identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating 
by video conference. Others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name or another identifier. Please take care not to share personal information. Anything that you broadcast may be captured in the recording. We ask that you maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. As chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. As the board will be taking up new business at this meeting as chair, I make the following land acknowledgement. Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Arlington, Massachusetts discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as monotomy, and Algonquian word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges that the Town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. So I'd like to be the first item on our agenda uh is uh is an administrative item uh it is the hearing in is approval of the uh decision in 20 uh martin street uh you've received that decision uh, on uh, in draft on monday and i uh, made what all the changes that were recommended where in this case we're just updating the header and the name of the file um, and redistributed that uh, this afternoon. Um, and I, so the, are the, is there, this is an administrative matter that will not uh, have a public comment period and we will not be discussing the merits of all of that. The question, the decision having been taken on May 23rd. So the, is there any, are there for any firmness condition, uh, comments or additions to uh to the the um to the proposed decision that you've received today no okay saying none the chair will entertain a motion to approve the decision uh mr chairman i would motion that uh the board approve the proposed written decision in 20 martin street Okay, the motion made by Mr. DuPont. Is there a second? Second. Okay, so let Mr. Holy, I think. Yes. Oh, was that Mr. Yes. Okay, so let's we'll we'll do a roll call down the board. Uh, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. Holy. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. Mr. Ricardelli. Aye. And the chair votes aye, and the the uh, motion is approved unanimously. Okay, now we're ready to get into the uh, the public hearings. Um, and the the first public hearing is on our list is sixty High Heath Road, um, and we see. The uh, Mr. Nielsen, uh, are you going to make the presentation, or did you uh, have somebody I'm, else who was going to do it for to do it for you? I'm going to start, and then I'm going to turn it over to the architect, Chris Berry. Okay, so why don't you tell us what you uh, what you're proposing to do? Okay, so um, as I mentioned, uh, I'm Chris. This is Emily, and uh, Chris Berry is the architect, also attending. We are. Uh, I just want to. I know. I know. You know, these initial statements should probably be pretty concise for your sake. So. I'm just going to say a couple of quick things. Number one, that uh, Emily and I are longtime Arlingtonians, um, uh, having lived uh, four blocks away from this house on, on Highland Avenue for 20 years, in Emily's case, 15 years in my case. And uh, we actually had no intention of uh, moving uh, anytime soon. But when we saw that a tiny house that adjoins uh, Monotomy Rocks Park uh, came on the market, we suddenly started thinking this would be a very cool place for us to 
sort of develop and live in for the rest of our lives. So, um, so we we jumped on this uh, house and and we purchased it, despite the fact that it is very tiny. It was advertised to us as 925 square feet, uh, and actually it's in a kind of a stripped out condition inside. It's not really livable as it is. So then we um, we set about designing uh, a renovation of the existing house and uh, an addition um, for these purposes, big enough for us to uh, kind of host family when they visit. We, we also, Emily works at home now, and I sometimes work at home, so we want a house big enough that we can both uh, work at home in, and so uh, that's resulted in 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 the current um, planned house that we submitted for the uh, uh, special permit. Um, we talked to the uh, the building inspector, Mike Ciampa, uh, even before we bought the house several times uh, subsequently. And then we had like an hour and a half long conversation with him a few months ago. And he, uh, kind of after looking through our plans, I don't want to speak for him, but he basically advised us that the only thing we really needed to apply for was a special permit on the basis of uh, an addition to the house that was larger than 750 square feet. So that's what we are um, presenting today. The, the other thing that I wanna mention, the only other thing I wanna mention, and I, I don't know whether it pertains to the, you know, the um, decision here or not, it might, but I think it would be of interest to the um, committee, member, committee members, no matter what, or the board members, and that's it. Uh, Emily and I both work in climate uh, climate change mitigation fields. And so as we were undertaking this project, we decided that we we needed to try and um, try to come up with a plan for this house that it was as low carbon as possible. Neither of us actually knows much at all about the building side of decarbonization. And so I just want to mention that we um, we hired hired a energy consultant to help us and Chris, our architect, think about how to design this house. We learned a lot about that and we um, uh, were very kind of pleased at where we got. We're trying to do this within our means. We, we knew we couldn't do a net zero house, but um, between the, the insulation and finding a, a, a relatively low cost supplier of, of triple pane, uh, passive certified windows and 100% electrification and solar power on the roof. Um, our, our consultant, John Roddenheiser, who is a HERS rater has advised us that the projected HERS rating for this house is eight. And we were pretty pleased. We were, we didn't expect to get that far and we're quite, we're quite, pleased about that. We want to make sure that you uh, at least were aware of that aspect of our plans here. So I'm going to turn it over to um, Chris Berry, our architect. Mr. Berry. Hello. Uh, thank you. It's nice to be here this evening. Um, I've been working with Chris and Emily for about three years now, and we've really been looking for solutions that reinforce the natural beauty of this site, but also fit within the context of the neighborhood. Um, we understand by definition, this has been classified as a large addition, um, but in relation to the actual surrounding houses, the net result of this project is consistent with other homes in the neighborhood, and in fact, maybe smaller than some adjacent homes in the neighborhood. Um, using the Arlington Street design, the Arlington design guidelines and the current zoning, we're looking for ways to achieve a modest home that addresses both their needs and reinforces the natural features of this site, which we find to be quite dynamic. It was one of the reasons why they decided to buy the house. Um, the ideas such as like a garage, which we know other people had tried for, were taken off the table. It didn't fit in the context. It didn't work well with the, uh, with the site at all. Um, certainly, we were not looking at a teardown, but that also is not consistent with the ideas that we believe in, in terms of green and sustainable environments. Um, and we wanted to carry the character of the original house on to the, the, the uh, addition. So the addition is, it's lower, smaller, and set back both from the front and the back of the existing house. And we Mr. Barry, it, let me sorry. interrupt for a second, but if you'd like to 
either share your screen or have us do it. You, it, it may be helpful for you to refer to the plans. It's up to you. Sure. sure. Um, share you screen. Don't to share if you want. Sorry, Mr. Olson. We can we can set that up if you want. Share the screen. Oh, do I have to do that, or is there a? No, I did it when he first came on. He's also. I think okay. I can do it. I. I just had to choose which screen. Share. I believe I am sharing a screen that looks like uh, this has got to go away. Um, we can use the rendering while I load something else. <laughs> if you would like drawings. This is the rendering of the front side of the house to the right here is I didn't talk, but we're not we're just seeing your uh, Chrome window. For your Internet Explorer. Okay. I. You see drawings now. No, we don't. No. Okay. Stop share. We'll try that again. Screen share. Share. Do you see drawings now? Yep, we do. Oh, very good. Sorry about that. Um. So uh, to orient you in these drawings, the existing house is this square, including the porch, which was, uh, and our addition is this piece here. They're linked together by the kitchen dining room space. Um, the second floor, here's the existing stair coming up, the two existing bedrooms, and the third bedroom is to the left here with two bathrooms. So it's still a very modest size house. Um, here's the existing house on the right, the addition here on the left. This faces High Haith Road. In the, the rear of the building, which faces the park, the existing house is now on the left, and the addition is on the right. This is the end elevation, which is all essentially the addition and the other end elevation, which is essentially the existing house because we're not adding anything on that side of the house. And if you want, I can do the rendering. That's the um, front side of the house. And again, the existing house is on the right with the existing porch and the addition is here on the left. So, Notice that the house is set back. The addition is set back from the existing on the front in the rendering. It's also set back in the back as well when you see the drawings. Yeah, we're set back and away from the existing property line or the existing um, building line in the back and the front. And again, I just reinforce um, what what Chris mentioned, what we what we discussed with the building inspector is that it's our understanding that we're here for the large addition classification and that we are essentially in compliance with the other aspects of the zoning code. And from there, we'd like you to possibly comment. Could you explain a little bit about the parking? Right At this point, I think that there's zero parking now and you're proposing to leave it at zero parking. Where, yes. where do you expect the parking actually to take place at this for the house? Uh, there is no parking for this house right now, except that this is relatively a dead end street. The street did not continue through because of some site grading issues, as rock outcroppings and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So the parking has been um, immediately in front, similar to parallel parking, and. So if we take a picture of the existing, the parking is here, which is essentially a dead end. It almost appears as a driveway for the house, although technically it is city land. I see. So it's the area that sort of looks like a parking space is actually on what would have been the right of way if the road had been completed. I through believe Ottawa that's Street. historically what would have happened. The road would have been completed, but it was not. Okay. Um, 
so I, I had thought that in looking at the plans that there were some plans for a gas line to be brought in and wondered how that was consistent with the idea this was going to be all electric. No, or did I, am I mistaken about that? No plans for a gas line. There is a wood stove identified in the house, but no gas at all. Actually, I think so, we have to there is the gas line. There is a gas line, but we're going to remove it. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, I see. So the heating, heating, air conditioning, and I noticed hot water were all going to be produced by heat pump technology. Really, basically, right? Yes. And you're going to have a high performance building envelope in order to, if not be passive house, at least at least make it a highly efficient, a highly efficient building. Yes, we have a. Yeah. We have a continuous exterior insulation as well as cavity insulation. Great. Is there any, do, do any members of the board have any uh, questions or comments? Mr. Chair. Mr. Riccardelli. Um, I was just wondering if the applicant could just explain the grading a little bit. It looks like it drops off a good amount in the back. Um, and it, uh, maybe that, that basement is a walkout. Uh, could you just explain uh, what the situation is and if there's any, you know, retaining um, that is needed as part of the construction? Sure. Uh, essentially, the our addition is the retaining. Um, the you're right. There is a, a depression to the side of the house, and the addition is sitting in that sort of likely depressioned area, which then becomes the retaining of the earth that gets. Um, backfilled in the front. So there's no retaining wall in the end result. We return to existing natural grade at the back. We modify the grades in the front slightly to um, basically essentially backfill the foundation, which then right. gives us a relatively level lawn. And so then that, um, that front foundation wall um, is able to uh, accommodate the drainage of that that new slope tail. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing not this, this is a public hearing. Uh, the uh, Public questions and comments will only be taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing their decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the participants tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate that you would like to speak. You'll be called upon by the meeting host and you'll be asked to give your name and address and you will be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair and please remember to speak clearly. Once all public uh, questions and uh, comments have been addressed, or the al allocated time has ended, uh, the public comment period will be closed. The board and staff will do our best to show documents uh, that are, are being discussed. Um, the application here, it, it's now about five minutes to eight, and uh, I would propose going to about a quarter after, 20 after, if the people, if there's enough interest in, in doing that. Uh, and uh, so then we'll, and then we'll see where we go from there. Um, the first person I have on, on, that shows up on my screen is Daniel Sheehan. Please, would you introduce yourself, uh, uh, say your name and address for the record. Sure, my name is Daniel Sheehan, and I live at 22 Longfellow Road, around the corner from this home. And Mr. go ahead. Just go ahead. Okay, so I just, uh, thank you. Um, I just want to comment that I did see these plans on Saturday. I think it's going to make a lovely addition to the neighborhood excuse me, to the neighborhood, and I look forward to hopefully seeing this all fulfilled. The questions that I had, and I want to have a comment also as part of that question is, what what will happen with parking now? The 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 past history of this lot is that the, the, the prior owners parked on the street. It seemed to me that it was 
their property. I, I guess they treat it as their property. That section of the street is not usable as a street. Um, I think as the architect, Mr. Barry said, um, it, there's a trail that goes up a hill. You know, there were topo topographic reasons why they didn't continue the street and they didn't continue the street. Um, is there possibilities of granting some kind of parking to this? And that would be, um, again, I think it'd be lovely for the neighborhood if that were possible. And that's all I have to say. Mr. Barry, do you want to address that? I think that's a decision for the town to make. I mean, it certainly would be lovely if the town made a, an official arrangement. The road might need a bit of repair. Um, the owners might be willing to consider some kind of um, compensation if if they can have an agreement to have some uh, parking designated to them. I think that's really what, what can the town potentially offer? What, what, what do they think they could do? So the issue is that the the area that we've been thinking about is the parking area that has been historically the parking area is not the applicant's property. It's the property of the town. Is that right? That's what we believe. The survey is it's certainly not on the survey. Whoever whoever it belongs to, it's not you. Correct. That's what yeah, that's our understanding. I just want to say uh, this is Chris, the owner. Um, yeah, that's that's our understanding, and um, as, it just needs to be clear for people who can't see this site that it really is a dead end. It's just the dead end of the street, and so essentially we're parking in the dead end of the street. If there could be a special arrangement with the town so that sort of um, formalized, that would be great, um, and we would, you know, be willing to discuss that with whoever. This is the. Hey, Mr. Shane, do you have some more anything else? Um, I just want to say that um, in terms of the parking, I you know I I concur that that is that is not a useful part of the street, and I think the town, if it's through the zoning board of appeals or whoever would be done that that is that's not a useful area that I as a near uh, a near neighbor get to use anyway. I mean, it doesn't serve a purpose. It doesn't serve a public purpose that I'm aware of. Thank you. But th thank you. No, I, I didn't by saying thank you. I didn't mean to cut you off. If if you had something else you wanted to say, you're free to say it. Uh, no, no. I, I I'm I'm also. I, that's that's the comments that I have. I appreciate okay. it, the chance to speak. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shan. Thank you. Um, the next person on my list is uh, Mr. Latonin. Hi, um, this is actually Liz because Eli is driving. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, we live at 64 High Haith, so the house that's right next to 60 High Haith, um, and are primarily calling in because we just wanted to just give our support to Chris and Emily. They've been incredibly communicative across the last three years about what's been going on. Uh, we had all of our questions answered on Saturday um, alongside others um, as they kind of walked us through everything that was going to happen, and we were very pleased to see that house turn into something lovely rather than the sort of, um, I guess, dump that it is now, because that's what it is. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, and then I'll just want to second that that ending that they're talking about is literally a dead end and nobody uses it. And so I would also be firmly behind that turning into something that they can use to park. Okay, thank you very that's much. Ms. Thank you, Ms. Latonin. Thank you very much. Um, the next person on our list is uh, Steve Moore, whom we've seen once or twice in the past. <laughs> Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, my first question to the applicant through you would be, is this a uh, public or private way? Mr. Barry, you want to comment on that? In reference to what being a public or private way? Is, is 60 High, is High Haith Road a public or private way? Is, I'm, is, I'm not familiar, but it, maybe the owner knows. I assume it's a, it's a public city street. Well, it, just just for information, for the town of Arlington, there's two types of streets, public ways, which are town maintained and town owned, private ways, which are not town maintained and actually a butter owned. It's complicated, but uh, there are private ways in the town of Arlington. I wondered which this was. Uh, Chris Nielsen, do you have a. Yeah, uh, we don't know. Yeah, we, we don't we've know. assumed that it's a public way, but we we don't actually know. 
Uh, well, I mean, uh, you asked, is high haith a public way? I mean, high haith is a public way. It's a, it's a, a road. Are you talking? You're talking about the connection between the between the two segments of. No, 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 no. They basically the, the the if I can intervene here just a second, um, the the roads like Massachusetts Avenue are owned by the public. They're by some by one government organization or another. I picked a bad example because that's not the town really, but uh, those are dedicated to public use. They're owned by the public. They're maintained by the public. Uh, but there are a lot of roads in town that uh, were originally built by builders and in, in uh, who did developments and so forth. The roads have not been dedicated to public use, and the people who live along the road uh, are the ones who are responsible, who own it, and who are responsible for uh, maintaining it, and who are responsible for regulating who parks on it and drives on it those are all it's all private property and not necessarily dedicated to public use there's a third category that consists of private roads that in one way or another uh, an agreement has been made with the town for public maintenance but that is a procedure that's done by the select board and i think what mr moore is driving at is uh, which kind of road this is because an, an applicant or a, an, an inner an abutter's obligation with respect uh, to various things may depend upon whether or not the abutter is uh, abutting a public street or whether he's a public abutting a, a private street, even though the private street may be dedicated to public use the way pri private streets often are. Mr. Moore, do I have that right? Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Hanlon. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's that's completely the case. And I would also uh, thank him for his fine driving pun. Um, yes, the reason being that this question is about parking on the street. If it's a private way, this would not be an issue. If it's a public way, it's a public street and the, the town uh, keeps the public ways clear and parking probably is not an arrangement the town would make, even if it's a dead end and of no use. Um, for, moreover, if this is a paper, if it is a paper street that occurs after the dead end part, um, butters cannot develop property or develop that section. Now, this this particular butter is not asking to do that, so that's a non-issue. But there may be a paper street that continues, even though the grade would not allow the street to proceed. Uh, anyway, I just the reason I brought up the question to do with that was because of the parking issue in the town. Uh, I, I suggest the uh, applicant investigate that because um, that will be key to re resolving any parking. I, I would be surprised if the board would approve the project without uh, parking on the site. Um, we're doing a large addition here and it would make sense to add parking to the site since um, generally parking is, is something which uh, properties do have, depending on street parking is not uh, a very viable solution, although it's a large issue now. Uh, the second question is to do with the uh, trees that are on the property, the where it's going to be developed. Are there significant trees? It looked like from the aerial maps, there was some significant tree cover. Are trees to be taken? I didn't see any trees on, on any of the, uh, the property maps, and I also don't see a tree plan, which should be required for this development. Chris, do you want to come? We talked about that today. Do you want to answer yeah. that question? Um, there's a lot of trees on the surrounding properties. There's a lot of trees in the park uh, right against the house. On the, on the property itself, there are a couple of small um, trees, like there's a dogwood. I don't think any of them are have a high, uh, greater diameter than six inches. Um, and, you know, and then other than that, it's, it's, shrubs um so for this project we would uh we'd be removing a lot of the shrubbery we don't know yet about the specific trees uh there, i think there's only two of them um and but we might we, we it's possible we might have to remove one of those trees but they're both less than six inches in diameter the trees that we'd be removing there are if you look at it like from a you know, from uh, whatever Google Maps or something, there's a lot of trees around this, but all those trees are, are it's canopy from bigger trees um, on the adjoining properties and from the park. 
Uh, Mr. Chair, that, that helps pretty hard to tell from the aerial. That that's good news. Certainly, if they're six inches or less, they're not they're not covered by the tree bylaw, even if they're in the setbacks. Um, so that that's uh, that's good news. But I believe you still will have to do a tree plan uh, because this is uh, additional larger than 750 square feet. That has to be approved by the warden and done by a certified arborist. Just information for the the, the client, uh, the, the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, can I thank you, just Mr. say Who's one speaking? thing? Thank you, thank you very much. We appreciate the uh, uh, pointing those things out. Um, I, I will mention that I did talk to uh, a, a town arborist. I didn't talk to the tree warden. I talked to a town arborist uh, early when, when we brought this property, and he kind of assessed the different trees. And, and so some of, some of what I've described to you is based on what he told me. And then I also had a commercial arborist come by, and he basically said the same set of things. So. This is not. Um, this is informed a bit by some information, but we would. Um, we do want to talk to the to the um, to the tree warden, town tree warden, right. about this before we proceed. Thanks. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next person on our list is Nora Notman. Ms. Notman. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? I can. Um, I am. Um, I also am a resident of Longfellow Road. I live a few houses up the street. Um, I'm seeing the plans for the first time today because I didn't make it over on Saturday. Um, full disclosure, I'm also an architect and I am Passive House certified architect. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I want to also fully support the project. Um, I think they've done a great job with um, the proposed addition, and I'm really familiar with the site as I walk by it at least once a day, walking my dog. And um, um, I think the the plans will uh, sit very well within the neighborhood. I'd also like to speak to the issue of parking. Um, I don't know if I'm able to share um, my screen, maybe not, but I'm looking right now at the um satellite view and the town improvements that have, I, I do believe high haith is is a public way but the town improvements that have been made to high haith stop before this property so there's a kind of orphaned little bit of asphalt and pavement that's sort of at the end of the dry at the of the dead end so i do think that should be examined as to whether it can be there's a way to formalize off-street parking for the site, um, which I think would be, it would be useful to have it be defined formally and not be a kind of random and informal process um, from the town. Um, and um, I do also applaud sort of asking for the tree plan because I think it's always good to do that um, when there's a larger project just to keep track of all of these things because there's been some pretty egregious additions in the neighborhood with a lot of um, removal of trees. And in this case, I agree that there aren't major trees on the site. So um, the tree plan shouldn't be any kind of a um, a barrier to the project going forward. But I think it's always good to have that information um, in the town's records as it's supposed to be. But um, um, I do think this is a really, uh, really well um, defined and organized project, and it will add to the quality of the street and um, probably also just generally help with the um, sometimes difficult drainage situations in that area um, when there's a big storm. So um, I think it's great job, you guys, and I look forward to seeing it get built. Thank you very, very much, Ms. Nolten. Our next speaker is uh, Jane, and if she's of French extraction, it may be Auger or German, maybe Auger, or it could be anything else too. But she, uh, Jane, if you could, if you could correct my pronunciation, I'd appreciate it and state your address for the record. Yes, it's uh, it's Auger. You're the only person who's ever said it correctly on first notice. So thank you. Thank you. I live at 37 Ottawa Road, so I'm a, an oblique neighbor across the uh, paper road, the High Haith Path, which is, um, you know, between our houses, between Upper and Lower High Haith and Ottawa. So I can see Chris's house 
from my window. Um, I also like the plan very much. I'm happy to know that they're considering uh, maintaining as much of the tree canopy as possible. Um, I can speak to the fact that it is a public road and uh, the town when they plow stops a little bit short of where you would park at 60 High Haith on that little strip of asphalt. And that's directly adjacent to the entrance that everyone uses to go up the High Haith path. So while it is a public road maintained by Arlington, that little orphan asphalt that Laura spoke about is where High Haith, where 60 High Haith people have always parked in the 25 years that I've been here. So, and the town engineer told me that the the path itself, the paper street is owned by the abutters, which surprised me. And he said that the town allows the 60 High Haith residents to park on that little strip of asphalt. So that's just a little historical note from uh, the past. And welcome to Chris and Emily. Okay, hey, thank you very much, Ms. O'Shea. Ms. Nopman, your hand is up. I'm not sure whether you had something else you would wanted to add or whether it, you had just left it up. No, I'm sorry. I'll I'll um, take it down. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next speaker I have on our list is Elizabeth Rollins. Hi, Elizabeth Rollins. I'm 47 Ottawa. I, I'm actually um, Chris and Emily's exact next door neighbor up the hill, even though it's a different street. Um, I just wanted to say I'm excited to see the house grow and change. Um, I think most of the trees that people are probably talking about are on my property, and I've already had a good conversation with Chris about that, about maintaining those trees um, during this process. And so we'll keep up that conversation. And also agreeing with, with Jane, who I've lived next door to for 15 years and didn't know how to pronounce her name. Um, people have been parking cars, boats, and RVs on the end of that street in, for the 15 years that I've lived here, and it's never been an issue. Um, so there's definitely some precedent for just what has always happened and has always been accepted and okay. Um, anyway, welcome, Chris and Emily. Um, we're glad to have you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Rollins. Is there anybody else who wishes to address this application? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll now close the public comment period for this meeting and the board can discuss their uh, findings and uh, and a potential uh, decision. Um, the vote taken at this uh, hearing will be preliminary uh, until a decision is approved by the board at a subsequent meeting and all uh, votes will be conducted by a roll call vote. You, have, Those of you who are here from the beginning uh, were witness to the process of, uh, of the final approval of, uh, uh, of a decision uh, uh, at the next meeting after a written decision is prepared. Um, so just to to provide a, a summary to begin with, uh, this is a uh, uh, this is a case that is uh, is uh, seeking a special permit for a large addition. Uh, the standards for that are set forth uh, in the bylaw. Partly, they are compliance with all of the provisions of Section three point three that we normally apply for special permits. Uh, but we're particularly directed to look at the impacts uh, on uh, area on people who are, are abutters and people who are are very very near to the proposed project, uh, because as is the case of this case, uh, the the proposal would otherwise apply comply with the the bylaw and be doable by right. Uh, but for the fact that uh, it is uh, a large addition and subject to a more detailed look. Uh, the uh, I'm not going to go through all of the different provisions in Section 3.3. Uh, we've had a good deal of discussion from a large number of the abutters uh, who generally welcome uh, this project and uh, are implicitly suggesting to us that it's consistent with uh, uh, it's consistent with the neighborhood. Uh, the uh, certainly there's a considerable public benefit, which I think the the board has in the past and and should take into consideration, uh, in that it's uh, highly energy efficient and if not net zero, at least uh, uh, something that is very much aligned with the town's uh, uh, 
uh, with the town's goals. Um, the, the one of the areas, uh, two areas that have required have had a lot of attention. One of which has to do with parking. Um, right now, there are zero parking spaces on site, uh, and uh, and as far as the record shows, there has never been. Uh, parking that is actually on site. Uh, the zoning bylaw requires uh, uh, one parking space, uh, but this is uh, 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 on, on the basis of the record before us, it is a prior non-conforming use and uh, the board uh, and no new non-conformity is, uh, is being issued and it is not being exacerbated in any way, uh, or at least it doesn't appear to me that it, that, that it is. Uh, with respect to trees, it is not unlikely that, uh, that there's not very much on the property that uh, would raise a concern, mm -hmm. uh, but if it's the board's uh, intention to approve this project, it may well be useful uh, for us to include a condition that would require uh, the preparation of a uh, tree plan uh, and consultation, formal consultation with the tree warden uh, before uh, uh, clearing anything more from the site. Uh, that said, that's that's subject to your differing on every single point, but that sort of is a framework to get started. Is there anyone who wishes to, any members of the board who wish to address this application? Mr. Chair. Mr. Holy. Um, I had a question, um, if I may. Um, this, I was looking at the, um, the table that was filled up as a part of the application, it says uh, the number of stories, the building height is still two, um, but this is a walkout basement. And with the new addition, uh, we would want to know the impact on the overall building height. Would the basement be still considered a, a half story or a full story? And there's no average grade shown. So it's hard to say whether it is a, you know under 35 feet, which I assume it is, but, um, um, it is not shown currently. So I'd like to understand, was the walkout part always there um, as a first question? And because of this new addition, has there been any change to establish if the basement is now considered a store in? Because the height seems to be below four feet, six inches. The ceiling of the basement seems to be um, above four feet, six inches. Yes, shall, shall I take that one? Yes, is this so the, be Mr. Barry. Existing basement is not quite a walkout. It actually requires you to step up in order to get out. And we have done the calculation um, for the qualifications to be considered a story, and we don't meet the qualification as a story. We're under that requirement. So we see this as a two-story house. So there, if Mr. Holy, am I right in recalling that the requirement is this this is the uh, ceiling being uh, above four four feet six inches above the average building height? Is that what the requirement is? I don't have the zoning ordinance behind. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, a basement shall be deemed a story when its ceiling is four feet six inches or more above the finished grade. And because there was no finished grade, I was unsure of if it met or not. Um, zoning, are you referring to? It's under the definitions. Oh, yeah, that's the definition. Yeah, we were using, we were, we were using that. We were looking at it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm scrolling for this. We're using the I think it's, it's the definition of a story, isn't it? It's on page 26. There's also a whole diagram of how it um sure how it how it's calculated. We did the we did the calculation, yes. Yeah, it's in the first part, um, it, the illustration. It's 222. Uh, Is it page 22, Chris? Well, it was 2 22. Um that would be in the definition part. There, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. We were using this and we're we're in we're 
safe on both of these categories. Actually, the diagram is quite similar to our situation. This would be the front at High Haith. This would be in the back. Our, our, the floor is lower than the grade. And when you do these calculations, our numbers are below the requirements. Mr. Barry, was, has this been a discussion between you or the applicant and ISD? Have they ever suggested that uh, that the basement should count as a story? I believe Chris has had some conversations with the building inspector. I've not specifically had any conversation with him regarding this. No one's Mr. Nielsen? it as being a story. Mr. Nielsen, uh, I wonder if that conversation, if that subject has come up with ISD. Uh, you're talking about the building inspector? Uh, no, yes. I don't think that's come up with the building inspector. So the building inspector has not has, has not brought this up with with you in any event, right? No. And he has re he has reviewed the drawings as part of as part of getting to this point and helping us, you know, understand the zoning requirements. He did review the drawings and did not bring this up as an issue now you've done a similar calculation i take it on the not just the existing house but on the house with the addition is that correct yes, yes. and those calculations uh, are similar to the ones that you've just described yeah they're here so the great point at the front the great point at the back the midpoint according to the diagram and we're less than um, we're here, I can zoom in for you. Three foot 11, and it has to be less than half of the eight foot five. And that, the halfway is the average grade because that's the... Average grade. Because the Lower average grade. grade has a different definition on how that is calculated. Um, mm -hmm. yep. I believe that's average grade, yes. And similarly, the uh, ceiling in the basement is not more than four feet, six inches above the average grade. Is that correct? Correct. That's what that's what we're grade section. That's the ceiling of the space is less than four feet six above the average grade. Mr. Holy, is this is, it, is this satisfactory to you, or would you like to press for more information? Um, no, it is. But this exhibit was not part of the um, what was submitted. Um, so. Ah. With your That's chair's permission, would this be released to the P, to the board? Not to review it, but as a part of the exhibits. Yes, Mr. Chu, uh, Mr. Barry, I wondered if if you could be so kind as to uh, submit the what you've shown us today yeah. uh, for the record uh, as well, so that later on when somebody tries to figure out what in the world we did, uh, they'll be able to see something that will help them get to that. Okay. And shall we submit that through, is there, a, is there an email address or how does that get submitted? You should submit that to uh, ZBA at town, at Arlington, what is it, town.arlington. Ms. Ralston, sa save me here. I'm getting all of my, <laughs> all of the parts of the email I, address all confused. I know what I Okay. Chris has it, I think. It's yeah. dot ma dot us, I think. But anyway, we know it. Oh, good. Okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, we... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, Mr. No, Mr. The... Holly, continue. Mr. Chair, there was one other thing is that I think um, when the average grade is shown in this section that is on the screen, I think we should also have the same noted on all the elevations just to be clear because um, um, not that because the just to be clear that the average grade at the height and everything is met, all the zoning bylaws. Okay, if that can readily be done, I yeah, we're probably going to act tonight uh, one way or the other um, on the application. So this is largely a matter of clarifying the record. Sure. Yeah. So 
you have a more complicated version of these drawings, but you'd like me to add these obviously don't show that average grade. Here would be the average grade in this particular drawing. And then in this particular drawing. Yeah, if like you could that. just. Right. Right. I, I, I don't want it to, to impose the application to additional expense to, to do any more. If you could just sort of indicate the information that Mr. Coley is is talking about so that it's readily apparent in the record. Uh, we, we see it now. Uh, and that's what we'll act on, but the record will go into the file and, and later people will wanting, will want to know what we see and that th this will help them figure it out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we'll add this to these particular drawings you see here on the screen. Is that acceptable? That would be fine. You, you should do this in whatever way is most convenient for the applicant, as long as the information is conveyed. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, is there any other discussion of the application? Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Hoffman. Just, just a quick comment. Um, and this is to the applicants just because they mentioned a particular interest in decarbonization. If I may. True, please, um, please go forward. Um, just, <laughs> um, I uh, certainly applaud the efforts around um, uh, energy efficiency, and I just wanted to note that the other aspect of it, which you've probably been thinking about because you noted the importance of saving the structure, is um, the embodied carbon of the material selection. So when you get to the time of finalizing the selections, um, you know, some of the most significant ones to consider are the um, deciding the products you choose for the insulation and the frame material. So if you haven't already thought about that, that's just a little recommendation to you. Um, but um, otherwise, I, I applaud the application. Uh, thank you. Yeah. We actually, I, we, don't, we do know a little, we have learned a little bit about that and we know that it's a significant consideration. And uh, yeah, we will try to keep our eye on that part too. It's a it's a tough one, actually, but um, to at least reduce the, the the embodied carbon. Thank you. Okay, so bear with me here while I re re trigger my screen so that I can see you all again. So, does there are there any other comments or or questions on the, on the board on the application? Right. If the board is is uh, inclined to approve the application, it will, of course, uh, wish to impose the standard conditions that are, are imposed on basically all uh, special permit grants. Um, and uh, since this is the first case of the night, I can read those into the record. Um, it will be easier if I slightly expand. Oh. The plan, the first one is the plans and specifications approved by the board for the special permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There shall be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Board of Appeals. Uh, standard condition number two is the building inspector is hereby noticed, notified that he is to monitor the site and should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time he determines that violations are present. The building inspector shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw and under the provisions of chapter 40, section 21D of the Massachusetts general laws and institute non-criminal complaints if necessary. If necessary, the building inspector may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1. And standard condition number three is the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to this uh, special permit grant. Um, in the course of the discussion, uh, we've also uh, discussed uh, having a tree plan. And uh, the chair would suggest the possibility the board consider a fourth app, a fourth um, condition uh, to the effect that the applicant shall prepare a tree plan and consult in consultation with the uh, um, with the tree warden 
uh, prior to the issuance of final permit, building permits in this case. So is, does, are there any other conditions that any of the app that anyone wishes to suggest? Does anyone have any questions or amendments or opposition to any of the four that, that I just indicated? Okay, hearing now, hearing none, the chair will, would uh, accept a motion, uh, a motion to approve the application. Mr. Chairman. Mr. DuPont. So I would uh, move that the application for the special permit uh, under section 5.4.2 B6 uh, be approved uh, as presented subject to the three standard conditions which the chair read into the record and the additional condition that the applicant formulate a tree plan in consultation with the tree warden in advance of the issuance of the building permit. Is there a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Ricardelli. Okay, we'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Uh, Mr. Holy. Aye. Mr. Ricardelli. Aye. Uh, Ms. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. Mr. Klein is not here. And Uh, it passes unanimously. So, Mr. Nielsen, congratulations, and uh, thank you very much for working with us tonight on the application. Thank you, and thank all of you for your, uh, you know, your, your scrutiny and your and your and your comments and suggestions. We really appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you so much for your help. I will stop sharing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oversharing. It could become a background. Yeah, yeah. I Thank should you. say, it, just encouraging you, the 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 issues with we we did we're not just being negligent and not addressing the issues relating to parking. Those are matters under the discretion of the select board, and uh, we would really have no ability to uh, to in influence that. Uh, but there did seem to be a substantial amount of interest into formalizing and and uh, regulating the situation that exists in the sort of transition between public and private that appears to exist uh, on on the street. And I encourage you to uh, contact the members of the select board to discuss uh, and can probably first the town manager to discuss uh, what might be appropriately uh, uh, done here, given the unique history of the site. And that's interpreted as a, su a suggestion for the client to approach the select board for- Oh yes, it's not a requirement. It's just that if you want to proceed along that line, we're not the body that can give you relief. They are. And under the circumstances, they may be willing to consider things that wouldn't generally be considered just because because of both the public private aspect of hate of the road and the long history of the way uh, in which uh, it has uh, done. And I encourage you to join with your neighbors in doing that too. It's, it's, it's a thing that will affect all of you. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, we, so we've done our first case tonight. The second one is uh, uh, 4062 Magnolia Street. Uh, and I'm wondering who will be the primary presenter on on this one. Uh, good evening. My name is Brett Carricker, um, okay. owner of Carricker Construction, and uh, I will be point of contact. Um, but the owners are on the phone. I believe I have David Saff, who is at 60 Magnolia and Alum at 62 Magnolia. And you can address a question to them, but uh, I believe this is a much smaller scale project than the previous one. So we uh, feel free to just direct them to me. And if I need their help, I will chime in. Okay, thank you. And I do have screen screen share if uh, if needed. Okay, why don't you, you you should? It's usually helpful, but if it you, it's really up to you what you, how you, how you want to present your present. Yeah, do I need to, be, I need to be given access? Ms. Ralston, is does Mr. Carker have access? 
All set. Okay. Thank you. All right, can everybody see that? At this point, I, I, I cannot. So you cannot see anything yet? Well, I see all of our friendly faces, but other than okay. that, not. That's, that's good. Okay, so forgive my amateur drawings in reference to um, what the building typically accepts when we're building a deck of, or a porch of this nature. This is, uh, we'll pass building, uh, building um, paperwork in um, most instances, since this one is requiring a special permit. Um, in scope of the project, basically what we will be doing is we'll be de uh, demolishing existing entryway that currently has a um, small roof above and acts as simply as an entryway alone. There's not much shared room space for two families with kids to uh, utilize the space. It essentially just is a glorified rain cover for their mailboxes. Um, so the current proposal is to uh, expand that footprint on the front of the house. Um, to a two-story porch that would allow for both families to have access and seating arrangements for the exterior facing the uh, Magnolia side of the street. Uh, currently, the only exterior use of the house um, has no back porch. It is just a backyard that is a shared space. So this would give them both private space and um, accessibility from their units to be able to utilize seating outside. Um, and um, also would uh, enhance curb appeal Currently, the neighborhood has, um, if I'm, you know, forgive my numbers to be exactly right, but I believe it's like 50 or 60 percent of the houses have this almost exact proposal in terms of design, a uh, double decker porch with a second unit having access from upstairs and the first unit having shared space down below. Um, in conjunction with the front porch, uh, we plan to do the uh, exterior siding. So we were planning on um, doing the porch first so that um, it was more conducive to the overall plans for the house. So the current scope um, of the front porch was important to be done first, um, but the siding is, is out, outdated aluminum. Um, and while my, it might be a beautiful magenta color, uh, it's time to update to a more standard siding. So um, in conjunction with that, this plan um, that the porch was needed to be approved prior to the siding. Does anybody have any questions on that? So, thank you. Um... So is is it fair to say that this porch extends across the whole facade of the house now? That's yeah, the proposal. Yeah, so I'm sorry, my uh, I'm not sure if my my um, shared screen somehow got spliced, but if you see mm -hmm. on the left of this, so right now that's the side. I don't know what happened with my um, my document, but it was not. It was originally just um, multiple single pages where you would see these. So I'm not sure how they got spliced together, but on the we'll left figure side. It. Um, so on the left side of the plot plan, you can see the front porch existing uh, with the setbacks and you can see the basic new deck addition on the side is around 70 square feet to the lower porch. Um, it would stay in the same setback requirements for both the driveway side and the neighbor's side, as well as the front of house. It would just add the extra space on the bottom floor, as well as the secondary uh, second floor um, exit for the for the set no, 62 unit. Are there any are there do any of the members of the board have questions or comments for this time? Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. LeBlanc. Um, I guess one question that I have is maybe maybe for you more is I, I'm just curious um, as to why we're getting this as in front of us. Um, just looking through the application, there's no like specific um, sections being sought for relief. So I was hoping maybe just get a little clarification on that for my own right. notification. So it's my understanding that what is going on here uh, for, and it's based on a conversation with ISD is that uh, is that uh, the porch currently extends into the front yard. And uh, so it's already a prior pre-existing non-conforming use. Mm -hmm. And what the applicant is seeking to do is to basically extend it along the same line uh to cover the the side of the house leaving aside the second story which is a little different it's similar to the projections into front yards that we often have but here 
uh, we're dealing with both a two-story uh, uh, porch and uh, looking at it from the point of view of, of an extension of a non-conforming use. So under the circumstances, the rules that will apply to this case will be the rules that are always applied to a Section 6 determination, which are ultimately whether this is substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conformity. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. I do have other a couple other comments on this. Um, Please proceed. I could. Um, so I'm just curious what the plan is for the infill at the base of the porch. Um, I know part of it is that existing concrete foundation, but the the other part that's kind of the, the new addition part, what that uh, plan is for that. Well, it's only two holes, so both of those would be hauled off site. Um, if, if oh, no, the um, the the infills um, for the the. Uh, for the porch where it's above grade, you know, where it meets grade. Um, so is it like, are you gonna put like lattice or vertical? Oh yeah, so yeah, so the entire the entire front part of the facade will uh, uh, will be covered in a lattice um, or design, a slat design, depending on what we end up doing. That was kind of undecided. So we would be presenting them with whatever lattice design to, uh, to enclose the porch, but yes, it would be completely enclosed. Okay. And then and my other a, comment with a, was with a gate, sorry. Okay. Yep. For kind of access, whatever, take care yeah. of them. Yep. Um, and then my other comment is um is the plan also to wrap these columns in, in something, either it be like an AZAC material or or other to um to cover up the kind of maybe pressure treated that it's gonna be to kind of yes, make absolutely. it cover um, like the example images you provided. Yes. Yeah, so um Preliminary designs are to do a AZEC wrap. It could potentially change to a structural column uh, similar to HB and G design, but um, that the permacast concrete column, as you as you would see. Um, but we have not yet fully disclosed on all of it. So these are just the um, you know the framing design and how we would build the porch, and then the overall finish will be wrapped in completely uh, with PVC or some sort of material to protect the wood long term. Great. That's all I had. Are, are there any other comments, questions? Mr. Chair. Mr. Riccardelli. Uh, just just um, two questions. Um, will the, are the stairs being uh, reconstructed as part of this or is it just the, the porch? It is the stairs reconstructed, but stairs are not currently um, in the bylaws typically as part of the structure. It's typically omitted. So yeah. that's a, to my understanding, I would just be rebuilding the porch stairs completely uh, based on the rise and run required based on the height of the new deck, which would be very similar, but they're current concrete steps. So they would be demoed and built with new uh, staircase with uh, pressure treated lumber and decking. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm not suggesting that we're going to regulate them. I'm just, just understanding the scope. And then um, for the, for the new, um, Second level porch, are you guys pro, uh, providing gutters and downspouts, or is it uh, how's the drainage working from the the new roof? Yeah, so we have an underlayment EPDM rubber roof liner that will cover the bottom with uh, sleepers to keep the profile low, so that the exiting of the house can be um, you know step out of the porch, and then that will drain on a quarter inch pitch per foot to a gutter on the front that will then drain into the uh, left side of the yard that will still be, um, you know, it's open grass there. The other part of the house will be where the trash cans go. So we will be going the opposite direction. Okay. So it'll go, it'll go on the driveway. It'll go into the, it'll go on the driveway side, but into the grass. Got it. Great. Thank you. Anything further? Okay, this is a public hearing. I read out the rules of the previous public hearing or the advice to give. They're all the same uh, in this one. So I wonder if there is anyone who is here to address this application. Go oh, seeing none. Going once, going twice. Okay, we'll close the public hearing and uh, turn to the board for any future comment. If we uh, just to indicate to the board, I indicated earlier what the rules would be and to summarize, uh, this is sort of a, uh, one hesitates to say a garden variety proposal for a, uh, uh, for a porch as we've seen often, uh, an effort to move the porch, 
uh, that small porch that is more a portico to the to the uh, roof. The board has generally thought of that as a favorable thing from a design point of view, uh, and has generally thought that was comp compliant with the residential uh, design uh, uh, guidelines. Here it's a little different because it's really an extending a pre-existing non-conforming use in terms of its ex its extension into the front yard. Uh, and also because we don't usually see porches uh, extended in this way that cover both stories, the underlying rule is is is, uh, is from comes from section six of the uh, of the uh, zoning enabling act and uh, section eight point one point three b of our zoning bylaw, uh, and that the zoning uh, that we may approve this if we find that. Uh, the uh, extension of the nonconformity does not substantially uh, uh, aggravate the adverse effect of the existing nonconformity. Uh, and we typically do that by applying the uh, special uh, the special exception criteria that we uh, refer to in the last case. Um, if it's the board's uh, uh, intention to, approve the application, you would want to do that presumably with the three standard conditions that we've already discussed. Uh, and I wonder if anyone else, if anyone has any additional discussion uh, conditions that they think would be appropriate in this case. Okay, seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion. Um, Mr. Chairman, I was trying to get my speaker on. I did actually, just for clarification, so this special permit is actually requested under 5.3.9A. So for projections into the yard, I just had it up a moment ago. And um, so are, is it your thinking that we are granting both the special permit for the extension into the minimum yard under 5.3.9? B, um, or excuse me, is it A or B? I think it's A, as well as the uh, 8.1.3B uh, finding that it is not more detrimental. So is it a combination of the two is really my question. I'm not sure that it's necessary. If, if you grant the, if the, I believe it to be the case that if it were just done as an extension of a non-conforming use, uh, that it would it would uh, sort of absorb the other because the relief that would be given would be as extensive and more extensive uh, than you could do under uh, the projections into the minimum yard. Okay, uh, but I I suppose that. And the the statutory requirements are are slightly different. So without sort of digging through the bylaw, I'm not 100% sure whether it all works the same. Uh, but I I trust that a, a permit that allows the for the application as the extension of a prior nonconforming use would uh, would sort of trump the need for any further for any further special relief from us. Uh, that would make sense uh, to me as well. So, um, so then if I may, I would uh, make a motion that the application uh, be approved uh, under 8.1.3b of the zoning bylaw, where we have found that the change will not be more or substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood, and that we impose the three standard conditions which the chair read into the record in the prior case and thank i can't you. think of any other conditions so that's my motion thank you mr dupont uh, is there a second second seconded by mr holy uh, we'll do a roll call vote uh mr dupont aye uh mr holy aye mr ricardelli aye Ms. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. Mr. Klein isn't here and the chair votes aye. Uh, and so the motion is granted. So thank you very much. I, I appreciate uh, Mr. Carricker, your, your presentation and, uh, 
and good luck with it. Thank you guys. Have a great night. Thank you. Okay, our next, the next case we have uh, coming up is uh, 14 Oakland Avenue. Uh, and I believe that the applicant in this case is uh, represented by uh, by Mr. Inessi. I am. Uh, good evening. Are we ready? Uh, uh, yes. For my presentation. Please, please go forward. Thank you. Uh, I represent Kathy Abichuk and her husband David, and uh, they live at 14 Oakland Ave with their two children. What they're looking to do is to put an addition on their home. Uh, and uh, we have submitted plans to the uh, zoning board and Vu Alexander is going to show you those. Uh, uh, Vu, if you can get them up on the screen now, that might be uh, good too. Uh, uh, is uh, is Vu, al he's allowed to do that. Yes. Very good. Okay. Uh, one of the uh, images I want to be shown, Vu, uh, is the difference in ele elevation from the right side of the property down to the uh, uh, left side, the lower side of the property. Uh, the, there is a significant difference in elevation. And uh, I believe a line has been drawn to show uh, what that uh, drop in elevation is. That makes the lot uh, different than some other lots uh, in the neighborhood uh, with respect to making it, uh, in my view, unique. That's the reason why I have filed for both a variance and a special permit. Uh, one of the uh, items that you'll see on the dimensional form is that we are saying that we are going to have three stories. Well, we, we're not going to really have three stories because that new space is going to be de devoted to mechanical and utilities. Now, and if you go to the bylaw at section 5.3.22, uh, uh, further subsection B, further subsection two, uh, basement areas, devoted exclusively to mechanical uses accessory to the operation of the building are not included in the calculation of growth floor area. So our position is uh, that uh, in fact, uh, we come out of that uh, three-story uh, calculation because of that. What we're planning on doing is moving the mechanicals and the utilities in uh, the uh, uh, other portions of the building into the new space. So the new space uh, would contain the boiler. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a new uh, uh, air conditioning setup in the building. Right now, the air conditioning is window air conditioning. Uh, and uh, uh, David, the husband, works from the home. So during the summer months, uh, it's uh, fairly humid and fairly difficult to work from home. So we're going to move the mechanicals into that space. So that space would be used uh, for mechanical uh, and utility. Uh, we th The plan submitted also shows some unfinished space that would be generated. That unfinished space would remain unfinished space. And if that's what the board uh, uh, indicates in their findings, then it would be unfinished space. The, uh, we were asking uh, for the relief, uh, uh, probably under the, uh, the variance uh, portion and not the special permit uh, portion, but I did file for both, uh, just to open the door for both. Uh, we, uh, if we're talking about uh, a variance, we know that uh, what we need to show is we need to show hardship relating to the land, okay? And I'm going to uh, argue and suggest to the members of the uh, board that the hardship relating to the land is the difference in elevation 
from one portion of the property down to the other. Uh, I mentioned in my uh, application that I filed uh, that the property has unusual characteristics, primarily a difference in elevation at the property, which demonstrates that constructing an addition at the rear on the current first floor and second floor level would necessitate a walkout basement. Uh, we're trying to uh, uh, avoid that, get around that, yet get some additional space uh, for the family. Uh, the additional space that would free up in the already existing uh, portion of the building would allow more room for the two young children of uh, the homeowners to have room to play, which they do not really have now. So we're asking for uh, that uh, re uh, relief from the board. I'd like Vu to go through the plans with you to show you what we're proposing. And I'd like to come back on after he does that and have a few more things to say. Vu, Mr. Anisi, could I, Mr. Anisi, could I just, I don't want to interrupt, but, I, but it would be useful for me to raise this now uh, before Mr. Alexander shows uh, the screens. Um, assuming, let me just assume for a moment that uh, in your application, the, in the application, it indicates that the existing house ha is two stories uh, and the house with the addition would be three. Uh, and I know that you have arguments about what a story ought to mean, but let me just set those aside for a second. If the existing house had three stories, in other words, if the foundation, the average grade were such that the basement in that uh, in that part of the house uh, was was uh, uh, could be was a separate story, then you'd be taking a three-story house. And extending the what I assume would be an existing nonconformity uh, to the addition, so that it would go from three to three without introducing a new nonconformity. And the reason I raise this is because just at its last meeting, the board had two similar cases. One of which uh, it approved when it did not when the change did not involve a uh, introduction of a new nonconformity. Um, and in the other was we just heard today as we uh, uh, adopted the decision in the beginning, uh, rejected the argument that the that a sharp downgrade, a downward slope such as you're having here, uh, qualified as a uh, uh, something as a situation in which the topology uh, 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 introduced the the hardship. Um, so obviously, as you know, the, it's a lot easier to prevail on a special permit. And I was wondering if you could gather your thoughts and think about this later, but uh, in particular, if Mr. Alexander could discuss uh, whether uh, the argument, it seems counterintuitive, but in some ways you're better off if the existing house is three stories than if it's two stories. And that's a matter of arithmetic, of course, uh, but it would be useful to hear your views on that. No question about it. Uh, can I have Vu jump in now? Please do. Yes, please. Vu? Yes, uh, this is Vu Alexander. Uh, th thank you for giving us an opportunity for presenting this to you. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Great, it's, great. it's kind of small. If you could make it a little bigger, it'd be helpful, but otherwise we can do our best. Great. So the so the existing house is you know it's a, a two we, it's two story colonial uh, house uh, it has a hip roof shingle style it's it's well kept by the owner and it's a very modest house um, so the the north side of the house is if you look at the living room on the top of the page to the north side of the house the uh, the property drops off pretty dramatically it's from from the front of the house to the back of the house is about nine feet. 
and the, I think the whole lot originally was very, you know, it just drops off. And when the, when the development of this prop, uh, this area got built in, I think they fill in uh, around the property, you know, uh, the uh, around the dining room, the entry, and create a a a, a garage, drive-in garage down into the basement. So half of the property, I think, is. Um, from the from the north to the northeast is exposed in terms of uh, the basement, right? And and the other half is covered by uh, uh, finished grades. So it's the average grade right now. I think if, if we were to to do the average grade, so it's it's still very close or can can maintain a two story home, residential home. Um, when we're when the owner proposed to add to this pro, uh, add to this home, you know they're proposing to add uh, a 19 by 18 uh, family room off the first floor and a primary suite off the second floor and extend that to the back of the house. Um, you know that so majority of these or well, all of the addition right now is uh, at above. the uh, basement level right so so the, the all three sides of the addition is is uh, at the basement level is exposed to um, to above grade finished grade in the back of the house um, but, you know the the, the addition the, the reason where we wanted to extend the barren walls down to the basement level to support it on top of uh, a new foundation instead of having uh, 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 posts and beams uh, exposed, uh, supporting the, the two structure above. So that was kind of the the, the methods and, and means of which we wanted to uh, uh, support the two structure. Uh, and this is the first floor, and that's and. And it's the second floor primary bedroom. So this all, so the, 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 the new structure is based on the extension of the existing colonial house with the hip roof and the details and, and the, uh, the wood shingles and, and the windows uh, detail. So it'll, look, it'll, it'll fit right in uh, with what's there. And, you know, visually uh, it, it, it will be integrated into the details and, and the style of the house. In the first, in the basement level, uh, there's a one car garage that not being used. Um, and there is a unfinished basement with mechanical space and storage space. So the, the new addition uh, that we're projecting the barren walls down to the new foundation below, um, create a new one story basement that we're proposing to uh, we're proposing to, you know, relocate all the mechanicals into this un unfinished uh, basement and uh, proposing to to rework uh, or leave the existing un unfinished basement where it is. If you look at the front elevation, uh, so you can see the the west and south side of the house is Basically, it was filled in. I'm, I'm assuming when when they did its construction and kept the uh, uh, the grade uh, naturally from front to back to on the north side of the house, where they can where they use it as a garage and a walkout basement. And this is the south side of the house, where right now there's a side entry to the house, and there's uh, the homeowner did a really nice job with landscape steps. Uh, tr transitioning down to the existing uh, patio that uh, the uh, the basement is walking out onto, and this this is the the addition that we're proposing to project into the back of the house backyard. And look in the back of the house. Uh, this is the existing uh, elevation of what's there. There's the window into the basement. And there's uh, the finished gray. The patio is uh, 
a little bit above the finished finished basement floor and we step down into uh, uh, the, the basement level and this this elevation it shows you the the natural grading of the site how it just you know it, it drops out pretty dramatically from the front of the street to the back of the house and it keeps going to the to the to back of the lot you know another drop another five six feet so it's um and that's pretty much you know it's a very simple design very simple layout um I just uh, there we're we're at we're dealing with the existing grades and the the con the contours of of the site so mr alexander i when you're just out there looking at it, it looks pretty similar to the grades that exist um, both up the street and down the street. Uh, is the topography significantly different here than it is on those on those neighboring properties? Um, they, no, they're they're pretty much the same. But the neighboring properties, they're 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 larger homes, and they're they're they added. Um, they all have these retaining walls, right? That that transition from from property to property, uh, like mm -hmm. the 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 house on the south side has a this this large retaining walls where it, it becomes like a garage and it transition down uh, to to their their back of property and 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 the house on the north side is it's the same. It's a large they're larger homes and they're they they uh, extended way you know just further back than than this house and they all have these retaining walls that kind of holds up the uh, uh, the properties. And, and and kept this existing gray where it is. It was like a sandwich between uh, two larger homes. Great. Could I ask you on the beginning on the house that we currently have before the addition? Have you done any calculations to determine whether the ceiling is four and a half feet above the average finished grade? I mean, have you actually calculated that? Yeah. So right now the uh, the finished floor. There's four. There's four and a half feet from the basement floor. Uh, Let me just be clear about this. I I I want to pretend now that the addition yeah. hasn't been built, isn't proposed, and right. I just want to focus on on the existing building as it is, with the existing finished grade as it is, and and yeah. I would like to know whether or not you've done a calculation on just that Hi. part. Ms. Mr. Hanlon. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm yes, the owner. Sir. Um, yep. with Dave. And actually, we have a comment to say about that because we've had um, surveys done by Rover Survey. Um, and the initial one that he had done when we had got property stuff had said it was it was two stories. But when we asked them to do calculations, as Rick Valarelli had recommended for us to do from the topography and the heights of the house and the basement, and all that stuff, they had actually said that our basement would be a third story because it it the height requirement isn't met for it to just be the basement so right. it actually according to the survey is actually written as being a third story on the most updated plot plan yeah so i don't okay. know if that helps us let's us. find out if vu has done the calculations kathy have you done the calculations vu uh i have well my calculation is is from the finish from the rough uh Floor choice is four foot one to the four foot six of the grades of the basement floor. Uh, I guess just to maybe help clarify what we're trying to get at is the basement is considered a story when it's four and a half feet from the finished ceiling to the average grade. So if we knew what the average, if we had a diagram on like this elevation, for example, of what that average grade was and what that dimension was to the average grade from the finished ceiling of the basement. That's the dimension that we're yeah. trying to drive at to, to so get the, to this point of is the basement a story and so on and so forth. So because that's, I think, a little backwards at the moment. The, the dimension should be from the ceiling to the average grade. Right. So the 
So the existing average grade of the uh, From the north side, the extreme side, right? It is. Well, it's for the, the site. Yes. So it is almost eight feet plus or minus. The average grade, right, right in the middle of the, the house to the underside of the uh, basement structure is unfinished. So it's, you know, it's seven, 10, seven, 11, almost eight feet. So that's the average is four feet then, right? You're saying the, the average ceiling, the average ceiling height is four feet above the average grade? Yes. And that's the that's the that's the uh, the uh, the worst case scenario. And in the back, where it's a walkout. Yeah, where's the walkout out is is a little bit better because the the, uh, the grades comes up and the patio comes up to the basement floor. If you count that as finished grade around the house, because there, there is a transitional uh, retaining wall, steps, patio that gets you down to the ba uh, back of the house, to the walkout basement. Mr. Nacy, do you want to? Well, I mean, I uh, you you mentioned uh, that you had a case last week that uh, or, no, or the last hearing uh, that uh, I was unaware. Was that uh, voted favorably, Mr. Hanley? The 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 variance was was denied. It was denied. Okay. The variance was denied on the basis of the first of the variance criteria, whereas the special permit that was based on a section six finding was granted. Okay. All right. The uh, uh, perhaps I need to make a transition then from uh, seeking a variance, okay, to uh, uh, seeking a special permit, uh, and I'd like to be able to track what occurred in that case. Uh, unfortunately, I was not uh, on the Zoom, so I didn't hear the case and I haven't seen the case since, uh, since uh, that last hearing. But I think I would, as we all know, uh, it's much uh, more favorable to a homeowner to apply and obtain a special permit than would be the case with a variance. You mentioned yourself just now uh, the other uh, uh, other houses on Oakland Ave that are similar to this particular house in terms of the drop in grade, and I suppose there are. Uh, and one of the uh, issues with respect to uh, granting a variance, of course, is that you need to show that uh, your situation is unique. And uh, Vu has made some arguments as to why our situation may be unique uh, with respect to larger houses, retaining walls, and the like. But if I could proceed on the basis of uh, a special permit, that would make it much easier for my clients. I'm throwing that out there without having seen that, that case of a month or so ago. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, well, let me just say this: the we haven't done a public hearing yet, so we probably ought to do that. But given the, I mean, where we are right now is that I that inspectional services believes the that both the addition and the or both the house with the addition and the house uh, the existing house would be three stories based on on their views as as uh, the owners have have indicated. Um, we've been sort of orally through some calculations here, which uh, uh, which have all of the advantages and disadvantages of things that are, are done here. But our ability to understand what this was all about on the record would probably be improved by your having an opportunity to, you know, to follow this path more and to assemble what it is and maybe to get together with ISD and see if you can identify where it is you agree. Uh, to see uh, 
and 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 maybe to provide us with a little bit more information that's focused on this other possibility that hasn't been before us yet. That'll also give you a chance to look at the two cases that uh, we had last week or last month, which uh, which sort of provide a brace and, and in to illustrate the difference between going for a variance in this kind of situation and going for a, uh, a special or a section six finding. So we'd be perfectly happy if you wanted to do that. Um, but what we have just said isn't at all anybody might say about this and there is the public to be heard and this is a public hearing. So we probably should get through uh, any other questions that the board may have and go to the public hearing and then we can return to this question then if that's all right with you. That's fine. Yep. Mr. Agreed. Chairman. Mr. DuPont. So um, as I am not an architect, it's not as easy for me to look at these plans and be able to uh, sort of picture what the average finished grade is. And so if, in fact, um, it's the applicant's position that they don't believe that the uh, basement counts as a story, we would want or I would want to have something from an engineer, an architect, a surveyor to show exactly what the calculations are to demonstrate that under the definitions of both basement and, and story in the bylaw that you were not a story. I, I think at this point, as Mr. Hanlon suggested, uh, Inspectional Services believes that the basement is a story. And, and so I, again, you know, would reiterate what others have said about the, you know, properties in the surrounding area. I go up and down Oakland probably two to three times a day. So I'm familiar with the incline. And I think both across the street, as well as on the same side of the street, you have similar topography. And, and so I think that what Mr. Hanlon had said in the very beginning, which is, you know, there's a question, I suppose, in going uh, for a variance where you're trying to distinguish your property as being unique as compared to the others, that might be a bit different than if you were coming in and saying that, you know, we do have three stories and we're looking to extend the nonconformity and I'm not trying to put. And that's, that's what I'd like to focus on. And, yeah. and so, and Mr. Anessi, I would just say that the decision was really the one we voted on tonight which is 20 Martin Street. So if you wanted to take that down, that's really what you're, I think what you're looking at. Yep. The other one, as I recall, Roger, the, the, the one we granted, which again, I think the two of them are most usefully looked at together because they show, they show the yin and the yang of the thing was I believe 48 Oakland, wasn't it? Um, that may well be a, a little bit of a failure in memory here, but that sounds right. Mr. Ralston, could you remind, do you happen to know that off your hand? We don't need to do this. I can, I, I can do this offline and give, and give Mr. Inessi the, the references. Uh, uh, yeah, I'd appreciate that. I think the, that is the way I want to proceed at this point. Uh, Kathy, I haven't talked with you about that, but we're getting good advice and suggestions from the members of the board. And I'd like to follow up on that and see if we can come up with a plan that basically can pass muster. Are you in agreement with that? Kathy? Yes, we are. Okay, thank you. Hey, this is a public hearing. If there's no more questions or comments from the board, uh, the rules for public hearing are the same as they were in the last two cases. And uh, is there anyone here who wishes to address this application? Mr. Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, could you refresh my memory as to the situation in which the planning board develops a memo to advise the ZBA? on a particular application the uh, well this is a this is not entirely routine uh, in recent times uh, the planning this is one of the things that as a matter of practice they have done in the past they have been doing it uh, less often uh, recently in part because they're very short-handed and there's a lot of other things that are uh, 
are going on. Uh, that was always just a practice. There's no requirement to have a memorandum from the planning board, although we consider them helpful uh, when the planning board has an opportunity to do them. But they have not had the personnel really for the last couple of weeks to be, or last several meetings to be able to uh, uh, to provide the memoranda that they usually do. Uh, Mr. Chair, is it your understanding that they're going to recommence that process when um, they become less shorthanded? I have, I, I don't know because it's an, well, I, I do not have an understanding on that one way or the other. Okay. The, the only reason I bring it up is, um, in the past, when I've reviewed various applications of this type and others, I found that myself helpful as a private citizen, and I was um, I was surprised to see them not existing uh, lately. And I uh, would hope that they would return because I think that's a, a particularly good use of the planning board. But anyway, that being here there. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Is there any? Is anyone else here to address this application? Okay, so going once, twice, All right? Well, the public hearing is closed. Uh, we'll uh, turn to the, I guess, Mr. Anessi, this is the time when, uh, yeah. if you would like to request a continuance, uh, this would be the appropriate time to do that. I would like to do that to the next meeting of the uh, zoning board. So the next meeting to the, to the zoning board is for a comprehensive permit. Uh, and I, I know that this is a painful because in the summer we don't have, a, I mean, everything goes slower, but the next meeting is July 11th. That's a comprehensive permit for 10 Sunnyside. And uh, Ms. Walston, when is the next meeting for regular cases after that? I do have some people on for the 27th. All right. Okay, the 27th, it would then be the appropriate date. That would be acceptable to uh, my client if uh, it's acceptable to the town. Okay, is, uh, I guess at this point, uh, if, is there anyone on the board? The chair would, chair would entertain a motion to uh, accept Mr. Inessi's request for a continuance. Mr. Chairman, just a, a a query the 27th are we talking 27th of july that happens to be a thursday i was just questioning whether or not that's that oh. was intentional miss ralston no i tried to i tried to get back on it's the 25th tuesday the 25th okay okay so the date for the continuous would be a day certain of uh of uh, tuesday july 25th at 7.30 or as soon thereafter as the case may be heard. That okay with you, Kathy? Mr. Chairman? Mr. DuPont? So I would uh, make a motion that the uh, hearing on this matter be continued uh, to Tuesday, July 25th at uh, 7.30. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Holy. Um, Mr. Anasi, uh, just as a mate, just to make sure that we've we've nailed this down, uh, that continuance is acceptable to you. Uh Kathy, are you okay with that? Hello? Yes, we're okay with that. How about Vu? Are you okay with that? I think I'm around the 25th. Good. All right. Yes, we are. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Um, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Uh, Mr. Holy. Aye. Mr. Ricardelli. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. The chair votes aye, and Mr. Klein is absent, so the motion for a continuance is approved. So uh, we'll take this up again uh, at, at the next available meeting. Um, and I'd encourage you, you know, uh, just in, as a matter of, of, of practice to just is to work closely with ISD on this. It will make everything a lot easier for everyone if everybody, if you're all are on the same page and see it the same way. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, appreciate your time and, and uh, look forward to seeing you uh, again uh, next month. 
So the final case tonight is uh, 60 Ariel, is it 60 or 61? 61. Six, 61 Ariel Street. And uh, who's going to represent the applicant on this one, Ms. Waldron? You're, there are two Ms. Waldrons, and so, uh, which Laura is the the name. Your name is actually what's on the screen, but yeah. Okay, go ahead. Was, right. Let's tell us what you want. We do like to do. All right. Good evening. Uh, I'm Lauren Walden, and this is my wife Emily Walden, and uh, we're here tonight requesting a special permit for our home at 61 Ariel Street for a large addition, um, sort of similar to the first one of the night. Um, we've lived at this address since January 2010, and since moving in, we've expanded our family and now have three kids who are ages 3, 8, and 11, um, who are attending preschool and public school in Arlington. And um, the five of us currently have a two-bedroom, one-bathroom home, so space is very tight for us. Um, we love our neighbors. Uh, we love our street that we live on, and... Um, we don't want to have to move out of this great neighborhood to fit our family and to, to stay here. And so we've um, planned an addition that will give us two additional bedrooms um, so that everybody gets their own room and doesn't have to share and a second bathroom to accommodate our now larger family. Um, the addition exceeds 750 square feet, which is why we're here for the special permit. Um, but we're complying with all of the setbacks. Um, so there's, there's no easements or anything like that. Um, and we work to make the layout as efficient as possible to meet our family's needs and um, kind of fit with the character of the neighborhood. Um, our contractor, architect, and um, several supportive neighbors are on the call as well. And um, please let us know if you have any questions and thanks for your time. Great, thank you. Um, I wonder if maybe the, your architect could walk us through the uh, drawing so that we can get a better sense of what you're asking to do. Yes, I can definitely do that. Um, Alexander Peterson representing Laura and Emily and um, Derby Square Architects. Um, let me see if I can share my screen. Um, let's see. Um, uh, okay. Are you able to see my screen? Starting. Okay. There you um, go. Let me just uh, get to the first page and then kind of go from there. Um, um, okay. So um, the current home is um, 900 square feet um, and it's um, basically um, um, doesn't have um, the needs of the family. Uh, I apologize. I need to. Um, make this too many screens on my screen. <laughs> um, there we go. Hopefully this will do it. Um, okay, so um, so we're basically proposing a, um, uh, so the current home is one and a half stories, um, kind of a standard cape. And uh, we're basically proposing an um, addition um, that is basically an extension to the homeowners off of the homeowners um, in ground uh, garage. So it would make it basically kind of like a two and a half story um, addition. Um, the slope kind of allows for that. So we're not changing much in terms of the actual um, slope of on the site and we're not changing um, on the parking or um, I'm not sure why my uh, screen is freezing up on you guys. I'm sorry. Here it is. Um, so on your um, um, on your left, you will see the existing house, and then on your right of the screens, you should see basically the proposed. Um, so the home currently has kind of a um, um, single story garage that's being used as a storage. We're keeping it as a storage room, and then the entire basement is more or less being used as a storage. So we're kind of just um, keeping that as an unfinished space and a storage, but um, more as a walkout um, kind of situation. 
And then on the first floor, we're adding a bedroom and a master suite with a new bathroom. And in the attic, we are doing a two extra bedrooms for the kids that are all in the attic space within the half stories, but we're not changing anything within the existing um, roof structure. Um, so that is still maintaining to be just a very um, attic kind of storage space. Um, and if you see the home, it's actually very, um, very small and very, um, 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 the attic is kind of, and then I'm going to share the actual existing house and street view. Can you see that now? Um, the street view of the house. Right. So current house is um, basically this kind of very um, historical looking cape and we're trying with the new addition to kind of maintain those historical details to kind of make it um, fit with the um, existing house as well as the neighborhood. Um, the um, uh, driveway and the curb cut would remain the same. We're just slightly changing the slope of the driveway and then allowing for the addition to basically appear um, right in front of this um, um, existing garage in this area over here. So um, I'm happy to walk you through to any questions, um, but I hope that gave you a pretty good summary of what's happening. Um, okay, were there any questions to the board? I have a question in terms of the overall size of the current house you had mentioned it was 900 square feet and your application has 1530 square feet and i wondered what the reason is for the difference so i believe um maybe laura and emily and or aaron the contractor will be able to say a little bit more about that when we were calculating the square footage and talking to the inspector he basically inclined that we should be including the basement in our calculations um because of the fact that technically the basement is a walkout and being converted even though so it's actually is a basement and currently is three point um uh, three feet four inches uh, from the ground to the ceiling. Um, so it's not a really usable space inside a basement. It's only currently six foot two inches or so mm -hmm. um, in the existing basement. We're making it um, a um, a one foot drop in the existing and the new addition. So it becomes a seven foot two inch uh, space on the inside. Um, but again, the family is mostly planning to use it as an actual um, unfinished space for the time being. Um, and again, Laura, Emily, or Aaron, feel free to chime in otherwise. Hey, Laura, Emily. That all sounds right. Okay. Yeah, the, the, current, the current basement is, um, I'm five foot four and it's, and it's short for me. Um, so the, the current is, is little, but, and I think there. <laughs> there's my tracker on as well. So I wonder if you could comment on, on uh, I noticed that they've got at least one significant, fairly significant looking tree on the, what in my neck of the woods, they used to call the devil strip, but it would be it's just, just off the curb. Another one in the yard, and it looks as if it's possible that there are some more around back. I wonder what, if you could describe what the situation is with respect to uh, trees on the property. And and which, if any, would be removed or or put in danger by yeah the plants that you have. Um, we've got on the property. We've got um, four mature oaks. There are um, you can't see them. They're all kind of behind the house. The the large mature oaks. Um, there's kind of one off to the side, and then two more in the back, and one in the far corner. Um, and then we've got one large. Um, evergreen that's kind of right up along that hedge behind the property line and that's that's clear out in the back as well um and then four maples i think there's these two in the front here um one off to the side on the um washington street and then a small um, um maple in in the back and on um, the current we don't currently have any plans for for removing any trees as part of it um, I don't know if this one, you know, in, in the front might be um, kind of in the zone there, but it's not not anywhere. I, I don't believe it is just because we're not um, 
doing any change to the curb cut and actually the driveway is actually going to be in a sense just going a little bit more if anything some of the bushes will probably be removed but not, none of the mature trees okay that's is there any anybody any further questions from members of the board mr chair mr holy they, they, so if I understand the drawings correctly, so there used to be a garage and now it's going to be an unfinished space, right? So would the driveway be used for the garage as in, uh, for the car park? Yeah. Is that right? So right now we have, um, we've got a tandem garage, but um, with a minivan and an SUV, we can't fit them in the garage. Um, and so we'll continue parking in the driveway as we have been. And and there is no in the future usage of this space for a garage. I assume it's going to be used as a family room and no more. Yeah, no. We we looked at you know we we considered the possibility of including a garage, um, but just given you know the per square foot construction costs, we'd rather not park a vehicle in there. We'd rather you know have our kids roller skate down there and and um, you know have have extra storage and. Right. Uh, the reason for asking is that in the, if that is the case, there is a separation requirement for the garage from the main space. So I was just curious um, on if that is being considered or not. Um, and I, I had a, another follow up question: Is the height of the new addition how high is it relative to the existing ridge line? It seems about three to four feet, but I just want to know from the architect, what is the difference in the height? There, between 30 the two inches, inches in height difference. 30 inches. Two, yeah, 30 inches, two and a half feet. Okay. Um, thank you. Is there anything else from the board? All right, this is a public hearing. Is the uh, same rules apply as have applied up to now. Uh, is there anyone who is here to address this application? Mr. Moore. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, uh, first off, just one question. This is a this is a pretty large addition. Uh, looks by the size, the architectural drawings larger than the original house. Um, and I guess with some grading down below the grade that's currently showing, or maybe it's just my misinterpretation. Um, what has been, I assume the neighbors were reached out to, and what was their response, Mr. Chair? That's my first question. So that, that probably is to Ms. Walburn. Yeah, we actually have a couple of our we, the neighbors. Yes, we do reach out to our neighbors, and um, we've actually got some of them on the line, including one whose hand up is uh, is hand is up for right after you. Okay, uh, that, that's great news, Mr. Chair. It sounds like um, they uh, the good neighbor policy is sometimes uh, spottily enforced, and it sounds like that did occur here, which is good news. Um, these are large trees, and the, again, I mentioned the addition is large. Um, I, there's going to have to be some significant protection for the root zone, particularly the tree that is in front of the house. Also, there seems to be on one on one street view, there's a very large white fence that wraps around one side of the house. It's missing in the other street view on the other side of the house. I don't quite know. I assume the fence will be modified or whatever to take that in. I was a little confused by the fencing appearing in one of the street views, but uh, there's going to have to be some root protection. And uh, there's, since this is a large addition, there's going to have to be a tree plan. And if you consult with the, the warden, and the tree plan has to be created by a certified arborist. Uh, and the public street tree, of course, is already a public tree um, that will, I assume, probably not be touched during the process here. Uh, I, it's hard for me to tell whether or not uh, that tree in front of the house is within the setback. I believe it is. Uh, I assume Ariel Street is a public way. So I think that's in the setback and uh, would be that would be a protected tree. So anyway, just uh, that advice is to go approach the, uh, the tree warden with this and uh, tree plan before any uh, demolition 
gets done or anything to that effect. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moore. Is there anyone else who wishes to uh, wishes to address the application? Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll close the public hearing. And uh, 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 there were a couple of people. <laughs> yeah, sure are, yeah. I've got. I'm sorry. I've got something in front. Um, I I beg your pardon. The it I have a very congested screen and it congested some people right off it. Uh, but Ms. Thompson, I think, was next. Hi, uh, good evening. I'm Deb Thompson and I live at 54 Ariel Street, across the street from Laura and Emily and their uh, their great family. And um, I live in the house that my mom grew up in, so I've seen that house for 62 years. And um, it's um, it's to the best of my knowledge, it's a lot and a half. I believe, um, and the house was always in great shape. And then the um, previous owner was older and wasn't able to take care of it. And Laura and Emily came in and they've done the best that they can to try and maintain the way it is right now. Um, but I'm thrilled that they're going to, um, Put an addition on. I know how 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 small the house is because um, Mr. Clark, who built all of these houses, is pretty much the same footprint for all of them. And I know I don't know how my my mother, with her parents, lived in that footprint. You two with three kids, uh, it's kind of difficult. So I'm thrilled. I wish you all the best. And um, if you guys need anything more, we have a great neighborhood. Just reach out to us. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Thank you. Mr. Gustafson. Uh, hello, thank you. Um, I uh, live at 50 Ariel Street, uh, not directly, but um, kind of diagonally across from Laura and Emily. Um, and I just really wanna echo what uh, Deb, um, Deborah Thompson said. Uh, is that um, I think uh, this will be great, um, you know, not only for Laura and Emily and their family, um, but for the property and for the house and neighborhood as well. Um, there's numerous other houses uh, in our neighborhood that have gone through kind of similar renovations, um, and I have not seen any sort of negative effects um, from those uh, additions that have been done. Um, and I think it'd be a huge quality of life improvement um, for their family, uh, which I think would carry forward, forward to any, you know, people that would own the house in, in the future. Um, uh, as Deborah said, I think most of the neighbors uh, are quite envious of Laura and Emily's lot. It's huge. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think there's plenty of room there. Um, certainly, I would be thinking the same thing if uh, it were my property. Um, so my full support. Um, I don't think it's going to ruin the view out of my uh, uh, front windows. Um, and uh, I know it's just an opinion. Uh, it's certainly not going to overcome any sort of restrictions. But uh, again, my, my full support to them. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Lee, I think, is either. Well, I, I'm sure next up is Ms. Lee, and we'll get to Mr. Nalbandian. Next, I'm just following the order on my screen. Ms. Lee? Yes. Mr. Lee? Good evening. Um, I just also wanted to um, come on and just say that I'm very supportive of Laura and Emily's plans. I live right next door. If the if you were looking at the view that um, the architect showed the house on the right, so number 57, so immediately abutting them. And um, we're very supportive and we're really excited for them to start the project. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nalbandian. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is Aram. I am um, owner of Alpha Construction, and uh, I've walked into many various houses and you know looked at additions. And houses are huge, so I walked into Lars and Emily's house, tiny house. I feel like they need the space. They are so crammed. Three children. Um, they they are a wonderful family, and the. The addition that's going to be done is going to be beautiful, and uh, I would just hope that the board considers giving them their space that they require. Um, Tree-wise, um, I know there was a concern from Mr. Moore 
Um, we're very diligent. I've worked in this town for many years. I've pulled multiple permits. Um, we will definitely do the tree plan. That's in, that's, that's in the next phase. Um, so no concerns there. I've done multiple properties, building a 5,000 square foot house now. Um, so we're very diligent and we're very um, uh, aware of what the town needs and, and what the town needs for you know, going forward to support the trees and uh, whatever that the neighborhood needs. So thank you. Great, thank you very much. Uh, is there anybody else who wishes to address this application? Mr. Scher. Mr. Scher, you have your hand up. William Scher. Yes, hello. Uh, can you hear me? I can. Okay, I'm, I'm a little, I'm not a very uh, experienced Zoom user. Um, I just want to say that uh, I also have taken a look at the plans and I, I really applaud uh, the efforts that they've obviously made to tie the addition into the, um, with the existing building. Uh, you know, if, if you note that the, in the front, they have that kind of gabled uh, roof element, the dormer element that mimics uh, the entry of their existing house. Um, and uh, so I think they've done a nice job with the design there. Um, and I'm happy also that uh, people have pointed out uh, the issue with the trees because our neighborhood has lost recently about uh, six or seven major trees. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that the, I hope that the, they have some beautiful trees there that they can be uh, saved. Um, I, sh I should note that I can tell you that the, the tree that's right in front of their house, uh, right at the curb, is, is sick and I'm sure it's gonna die very soon. So I don't, and people should be aware of that. That's already a lost tree, I think. Um, and then the only thing that I would uh, maybe just urge, I don't, I don't know whose purview this is, but I think on a lot of projects, um, one of the things that gets done sort of on an ad hoc basis uh, is like the, you know, the compressors and the heating units and the cooling units and all those things and they sort of they never show up on the plans and but then of course they need to go somewhere and they often just get placed almost you know in a place that's uh yeah i don't know not just maybe convenient for the installer but not necessarily uh uh best for the neighborhood so uh, i just hope that some attention can be uh, taken there in terms of where the placement of these various mechanical systems will be. Terrific. All right, is there any questions? I, I, also, I also just want to say I second, you know, I can't believe that they've been uh, raising such a large family in such a small house. So I, I definitely commiserate with them. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how they did, they've done it, but it's a great family. Mr. Moore, you have another shot at it. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, for a second. I uh, um, I just want to suggest that when they approach the tree warden to talk about protection and develop the tree plan, that they, they suggest you look at that street tree, because if it truly is sick or dying the way many trees are on the street, they, the town can take it down um, because it becomes a safety hazard and then can replant in the area or the Applicants can request a street tree uh, for their property, which is a very easy process. Just a suggestion. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moore. Yeah, and in re in reply to that, Mr. Moore, we did uh, contact the town arborist um, a couple years back when we noticed that it seemed sick, and they they came out, they trimmed it, and they said it's good for now. So <laughs> maybe they'll take a look again. Mr. Mr. Moore, I wonder. I have a question for you. If you're if you're still there, you are. Yes, sir. Um, when when people talk about the town arborist, uh, is that a separate position from the tree warden? Yeah, there may be some confusion here. Um, the town, the Department of Public Works has a tree crew, of, uh, which is comprised of a number of tree climbers, a manager, that kind of thing. The tree warden is the the head of the um, the tree di tree division, so to speak. Um, though there actually may have been a division lead that's of a different name. The tree warden is the sort of the final authority 
but the I'm not sure there's a, a town arborist which is separate from from Tim Lefebvre, who's the tree warden currently. Uh, but the tree crew folks all have various expertises that probably gets uh, queried now and again. Okay, thank you. So can I? I'm not sure whether Mr. Mel now Bandian or Mr. Shear, both of whom have their hands up, still are whether that's just left over or whether you want to speak again. Nope, they have all disappeared. Disappearing hands. Um, is there any? Is there any other? Anyone else from the public who wishes to address this? Yeah. Going, Tracy and Michael Kelleher. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I don't know whether I'm calling on Tracy or Michael, but I'm sorry, this is Tracy. Okay, you're recognized. You're up. Okay. I'm at my husband and I are at 51 Ariel. We've been there since 1990. We've watched people come and go. We've watched, we've actually done additions to our home also. So we are really looking forward to Laura and Emily having the same space to enjoy and raise their family. Their house is very small. So Michael and I both are very excited about them doing this project. Thank you very much, Ms. Keller. Okay, now, are there still, are there any others? I, I see some of you, but as soon as you raise your hand, I'll, I'll see you. All Hello, right, going. can you hear yep. me? Yes, uh, so far you're 1508, triple star 894 so you'll have to identify yourself for the record <laughs> sorry i'm i'm on just the phone not on the computer um my name is andrea drusky and i am at 15 carl road which is perpendicular to ariel and i have to say i'm in full full support of this project my kids currently share a room we have a small house and i totally get it and i think i i just i'm so excited for their family and I am in full support and it's going to be so fabulous for them to enjoy their space. Great. Thank you very much, Ms. Keller. Thank you. So how about, is there anyone else? Going, going. Okay, gone. Um, so the public hearing is closed. It's been, it's been an edifying and inspiring uh, conversation and I thank you all uh for uh stepping in um if the board were inclined to grant this application for a special permit for a large addition um the uh, uh the he would presumably want to use the three standard conditions uh i would suggest that in light of the, the discussion on the uh on trees that the discussion the condition that we adopted in the first case uh, that we heard tonight uh, relating to consulting with the, the tree warden uh, might be an appropriate uh, addition as well. Uh, does anyone wish to add, have any other condition that they have in mind that might be appropriate in this case? Okay, seeing none. Um, it's up to the board, of course, whether they are interested in the fourth condition that that I just indicated. Uh, at this point, the chair will enter uh, would entertain a motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Dupont, um, I would like to move that the board approve the application uh, for the uh, construction of the addition under five point two. 5.4.2 B6 of the zoning bylaw. And as was just mentioned, include the three standard conditions and then the fourth condition, uh, much as we had done on High Haith, just saying that the applicants will formulate a tree plan in consultation with the tree board. Okay. The motion has been made by Mr. DuPont. Is there a second? Okay. Second. Seconded by either Mr. Ho Mr. Holy and Mr. Riccardelli. You're a tie. You can give it to Mr. Holy. No, I, yeah. Well, Mr. Holy has already pretty much monopolized the second all, all the evening. So, so but you yeah. can, you can fight for it. You'll you can flip a coin later on. We'll we'll uh, say seconded by someone. Um, the uh, uh, to approve with four conditions. 
Um, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Holy. Aye. Mr. Riccardelli. Aye. Mr. Ho Ms. Hoffman. Aye. Uh, Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. Mr. Klein is absent and the chair votes aye. So uh, thank you for spending your evening with us and uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Congrats. All right. So the hearing on uh, this is closed. As we've discussed earlier, the uh, in terms of where we're going on July 11th, we're going to have a hearing on uh, 10 Sunnyside. I expect at that point that we'll be able for the first time to have some uh, input from the town's uh, peer review consultant. Uh, on the 25th, we have uh, a, a regular meeting scheduled with at this point, uh, I think it's two. Uh, cases that look like they may appear then. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up to everyone is that uh, the 10 Sunnyside won't be over uh, after July 11th. Uh, there will be two or perhaps three more sessions of that hearing, I believe. Uh, part of it will be to to work through with the issues that Tetra Tech may have with the application and uh, to make sure that those things are are done. Uh, we, we always have, and this could be conceivably connected with the responses to the Tetra Tech comments, uh, we always sort of do a wrap up to review the various things that have been raised and make sure that we have not forgot, overlooked anything or that we at least know what, what, uh, what the responses are to all of that. Um, and then finally, after we do all that, uh, we generally get an opinion from a draft opinion from the board's consultant, uh, 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 Mr. Haverty, and spend at least some time giving the applicant and the public uh, an opportunity to discuss those conditions, to discuss the way they're worded, to discuss what isn't there or what is there, and to uh, make sure that that we understand what the issues are when we close the public hearing uh, and go into the radio silence that characterizes our deliberations. Um, I've looked a little bit at where the uh, where possible Tuesdays are. Um, obviously, we've just gone through uh, July. Um, and uh, it, the and I have some information as to where you are. And if I forgot and didn't put it on the board's calendar, I apologize, but hope to be met, corrected in my ways. Uh, April, excuse me, August, uh, the August 1st, August 15th, and August 29th are all Tuesdays in August, which I don't know for sure that somebody is there is is going to not be able to 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 be on the on the call and uh, i think i sent around a a, a a email earlier today asking you uh, to let me know uh, which if any of those days might work for you which definitely don't work for you is more is even more important uh, and uh, I think that we'll probably want to use one of them. We might want to use two of them. The 15th and the 29th have better spacing maybe than others. Uh, and I'm hoping that we can bring the this, app, this application to a conclusion, the hearing on the application to a conclusion uh, by, by the middle of February. Uh, so if you could look at your calendars, we still have got to talk to the applicant. We still have got to talk to the peer review. Uh, consultant. There's lots of other people who have schedules that are all difficult to manage during the summertime, but uh, we need to sort of set something down in order to be able to avoid uh, losing our momentum after July 11th. All right, so I have nothing more to say. Does anyone else have anything they would like to bring up, bring to the attention of the board? Mr. Uh, Moore, you look as if there's something that you would like to talk about. Yeah, I, I've been doing this too long. Now you now you know you can figure me out. Uh, uh, I just want to say that um, you know I've been coming to this meeting for a while, and this is the first instance I can remember where Mr. Klein was not around. And um, although I'm sure there's been other instances where I've just not been in the meeting, um, it was quite noticeable that he wasn't here. Now that's no reflection on you, Mr. Hammond. <laughs> yes, it is, but that's okay. I understand. His dedication. 
his absence shows his dedication, I guess, in, in my view, because I've never, never seen him not here. Meanwhile, you're getting quite the workout between this and 10 Sunnyside. Um, so, uh, no, no, no reflection on you. You ran the meeting very well, Mr. Handler, in my humble opinion. I just wanted to note that Mr. Klein's absence was noted. Well, thank you. I noted it. I noted it too every second. Okay. Well, Mr. Klein is is on his vacation. He he. I don't know when he when he takes a vacation from his job, but he certainly never takes a vacation from us. And so I I wish him the best. He he certainly needs it. He's one of the hardest working people I know. Okay. Well, in the absence of anything else, uh, I think we've come to the point where the chair can entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So Mr. Moved, second, moved by Mr. DuPont, seconded by either Mr. Riccardelli or Mr. Holy, depending upon who missed out on the last one. <laughs> okay, Mr. Riccardelli will do it. Uh, all of, uh, we'll do this by voice, by uh record the by told vote whatever it's called uh mr mr dupont aye uh mr uh riccardelli aye uh mr holy aye mr hoffman Mix. mrs miss hoffman <laughs> <laughs> oh this is so hard <laughs> It's late, and I got up very early and cuddled the grandchildren. So, all right, Miss Hoffman. You've done great. Aye. Mr. Yes. LeBlanc. Aye. And uh, I, uh, I'm about to call on Mr. Moore, but I probably shouldn't. Um, the chair votes aye, and the yeah, and the meeting is adjourned. Good night to everybody. We we'll look forward to seeing you on July 11th. Good night, everybody. Wow. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.